And with that, what a pleasure. Seven-time Super Bowl champ, uh, Tom Brady, now at Fox, five-time Super Bowl MVP. Second time I get to talk to him. There he is. So first of all, I got to start with this. So I watched Edelman for years, and I've argued he's a Hall of Famer. I had no idea he was going to be good on TV. I thought he was a slot receiver. <laughs> He'd come in here ham and egg it. That guy's fantastic. So did you know? Yeah, I know. I had, Tom, I had no idea he'd be that good. You must have yeah. known. I did know he's such an honest, authentic guy. And I think what you saw on the playing field is exactly the way that he approached his, uh, his after football career too. So nothing Julian does surprises me. He's uh, an incredibly hard worker. Uh, he's very endearing to a lot of people. And I think what you see with him is what we always saw behind the scenes in the locker room, uh, getting ready for his prep on the field. And and uh, you could see why we always had a great relationship because he's just such an authentic guy. And I love what he's done in his post, uh, post-football post career. You know, you had a comment um, about chess and checkers. And I, and I said that day, I said, there was a moment in your career when I thought you graduated to like a supernova. And it wasn't just the rings. You had an interview. And I think, you, I don't know, it was after a practice with Jay Glazer. And Jay asked you a question, and you said something. You said, Jay, you can throw anything at me now. Like, I've seen everything. And I'd never heard you say that. And so as I watch a Mahomes or a Lamar or Mahomes, that was over 10 years in your career. Do you believe that Mahomes, Josh, where are they, Tom? And by the way, they also have unique physical traits. And I would understand an athlete spending a little less time on film if they ran a 4-4-40. Where do you think Mahomes yeah. is in the pre-snap stuff now? Is there growth left? Yeah, absolutely. I think a lot of it comes down to when I think of my growth as a player, it was really about who was pushing me to succeed and who was pushing me to learn more about the game. And I was fortunate. I had uh, Coach Belichick earlier in my career that – I had meetings twice a week with them about defenses, defensive players, skill sets, defensive coordinators, how they were going to call the game against us, you know, what they were going to do when we motioned across the formation, when we lined up in certain formations, how they were going to adjust based on their calls. And if we motioned out of that, what to expect. So there was such a high level of football IQ that I was getting every single day in practice from my own coach. And then when Josh took over as the coordinator, he came in with his own philosophies and ideas about how to attack defenses. And then I had mine and then Josh left and then I, okay, great. A little bit was more on myself and, and working with Billy O'Brien to really dive into the deeper parts of, of offensive football. And then Josh came back and then we saw another kind of explosive movement in our offense when we got Gronk playing the way that he played for his entire career. So I think it's all about evolution as a player. I think, everyone's going to evolve and grow at different stages. Some people grow and evolve earlier in their career, and you don't see much growth after three or four years. I always love the late bloomers, the guys that really appreciate how hard it is to get to this professional moment where you become dependable and consistent and really a a primetime player for your team. So I think Patrick, obviously, I think he's a tremendous player. He's a great leader. I think that's one part. Everyone would look at all oh, a pass that's a no-look pass. I look at how do his teammates care about him? Do they respond to him? And that happens week in and week out with him. So that's why I think they're always the team to beat because he can play at an elite level and he can bring his teammates along with him. And I saw that a lot when I played Peyton Manning. He was the same way. When I played Drew, Ble- Drew Brees, when I played Phillip Rivers, Um, When I played Brett Favre, I mean, these are guys that were great leaders for their team. And then you could see why that team was always knocking on the door. And I had a lot of other great players with me along the way that pushed me behind the scenes every day in practice to be a little bit better. All the defensive players, they were as competitive as I was. And I wanted to get the best of them every day and they wanted to get the best of me. So I felt like we were always so battle tested in these moments. We would have we get the number one seed because we played well over the course of the year. And then we'd go out that first week of the playoffs when we weren't playing and we practiced like we were getting ready for the Super Bowl. We had competitive drills, two point plays, end of game situations, two minute drills. And coach Belichick was pushing us to make sure that we 
stayed sharp in those moments. So yeah. there was never a chance to take the foot off the gas pedal. And again, I appreciate about those guys that you mentioned. I think their development, the key to their development is who's really pushing them to get better. Because as an individual, you could push yourself to a certain point, but there's days where you need people to push you. Sure. And that's what teamwork's all about. That's is people that are pushing each other to be successful. And I love the fact now that in my second career, I get to be on Fox with an amazing group of teammates with uh, with Kevin Burkhardt and Aaron and Rich Russo and, and Richie's Ions and what they do for, for everyone in the booth. I love watching Greg do his thing this year. So I'm tra- I transitioned from one team to another group of teammates that I'm equally as excited about to, uh, to share the stage with. Yeah, it's the best group I've ever worked with by far, and I have great respect for the other place. I said something about Brock Purdy. I said... You know, if you're – and I I, talk, I have friends that are GMs in the league, and I was texting a couple last night, and I'm always asking questions. And I said, I can measure arm and strength and even a little bit cognitively. I can watch tape. But what I can't – and this is why quarterback is so hard. I mean, it's just amazing. You go late round. Montana goes later. Russell Wilson goes later. Peyton Manning's rare. Number one high school, number one yeah. college, number one pick. That's rare. It's not linear. Yeah. But the one thing you can't judge, and I did see it from Brock Purdy this weekend, and I could test you on paper for hours. Do you get nervous? Bill Russell threw up before every game. You didn't have great first quarters. Sometimes I remember your first quarters. You were amped. I mean, that ball was flying out of your hands. And But there's something about later football. I always felt like you were ju- you couldn't wait to get back on the field in second halves. And I saw it with Brock Purdy. So I have to ask you, as he goes into his first Super Bowl, go to your last. Were you nervous? How did you suppress it if you were? Yeah, I think part of it, part of that is putting yourself in those positions where you make yourself nervous. I would go out to practice and I would be so ready for practice. I wanted to see how I responded to my own teammates in practice when they knew what we were doing, when they knew the kind of routes we like to run. And I, I put a lot of pressure on myself so I could deal with those feelings of, whether it was anxiousness or nervousness that you're always going to feel as an athlete, because there's nothing guaranteed when you go out there on the field, there's no part of the game that is, is knowing exactly how it's going to unfold, which is great. Why we watch the television and why we watch the the games is because we want to see how they unfold as well. So none of these games are predictable. I think there's parts of me say, Oh, I think they're going to do these things, but how's the other team are going to respond. I didn't think, in the Niner game that Detroit was going to get the ball first, run the ball three times and be in the end zone on a 40 plus yard <laughs> reverse. But when I saw that, I was like, wow, what's the Niners defense going to do? How are they going to stop the run? How are they going to stop the boot? How are they going to stop the reverse? They struggled with that the entire first half. Then they come out in the second half and they found a way to say, okay, this is how the game plan is identifying itself. This is how we're going to now go in there and try to defend it. And then they tighten it up. So right. I watched Novak Djokovic lose so many first sets. And then he's just feeling it out. And yeah. he's not hes not exactly, you know, you don't need to dominate 6-0, 6-0, 6-0. Sometimes you could lose a little bit early. Not that you're trying to, but the other team's got a plan as well. And I think as the game goes on, you see what the plan is. And then ultimately you adjust your plan to try to counter it you know, almost like a counterattack. And our teams were really good at that over the years. We had a lot of really sophisticated minds that were out there. Not only did we have a plan going in, but we did have a backup plan. And then we adjusted. I remember the 2007 Super Bowl, the one we lost to the Giants. We had a really hard time blocking them in the first half. They had a lot of blitzes coming at us that were tough to pick up. Spagnuolo was on fire and he was hitting us at the right time. We went in at halftime and we said, screw the game plan we had. Let's throw it out. Let's get to things that can slow down the rush. And then we had a little more production in the second half. Not a lot, but at least they weren't bearing down on us every single play. So football really is a chess match. And I love to see them unfold over the course of the game. You judge games based on a four-quarter performance, not a one-quarter performance or a halftime performance. But I want to see how it unfolds over the entire game. And Brock really showed, I think, what he could do in the second half. Down against another great team to rally his team and that offense to a great second half that allows them to play for a world championship. By the way, before we go, uh, I, 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 I know both you and Peyton, but mostly casually like this, but you know, I can tell you're both smart because neither one of you went into coaching. you both went into television 
And let me tell you, it's way easier because I can work in TV. So I can't wait to have you. Smart guys. You and Peyton both. I'm going I'm to skip the front office stuff. Was this? Did you know you were going to do TV? I had when when uh, when Eric and Brad uh, approached me, um, it was not on top of mind. And I walked out of that meeting going, wow, what an incredible way to move out of the playing field. And how do you impact people in a positive way in the second part of my life? And, and, and I get to use my voice doing that rather than just like my physical skills on the football field and, and how I thought about the game. But now I get to sit there and be in a booth. And I've actually walked through that studio that you're sitting in right there yep. several times and and you see it and then you get excited about what the opportunity can bring. And I love the fact that I'll have a voice that can um, carry a lot of credibility with what I say. And, and ultimately, for me, it's about getting really comfortable in a new role. But I also know that going into it, I'm, I'm not a finished product. And I've reached out to a lot of different people this se- this football season and had a lot of phone conversations with people who have really helped me out. And I'm looking forward to continue to do that over the next eight months. I don't have to go on air till September of next year, but I really want to be prepared for that first time out. But I also know I'm going to improve and grow as it goes over the next 10 years. So I'm excited. I love being part of the Fox family. I love feeling like I can still make a contribution to the game by highlighting and showcasing how great it really is. And I want to do that uh, in a very authentic way, in an honest way. And, I do feel like I'm going to call it as I see it based on the really unique perspective that I had over a 23-year playing career. By the way, Belichick doesn't look like he's going to land one of these jobs, although I think if you're Washington, you have to consider him. A lot of cap space. They've got the receivers. He had struggled offensively drafting. Um, if, if Bill doesn't get a, a gig, can you see him retiring, or do you think the fire still burns with Bill? I think I think the fire burns with him because he's got – he loves the sport. He loves the preparation. He's been doing it for decades. And in my mind, there's nobody better than him at it. So whoever gets him at some point is going to have, in my opinion, the greatest coach ever. And um, and I know he's as competitive as can be, and he wants to be out there winning football games as a coach. Yeah, there's only so many golf rounds <laughs> competitive people can play. I love yeah. golf, too. And I can see palm trees behind you. Golf is great. But it's fun to yeah. it's fun to be in the game. It's fun. It's yeah. fun to talk about it, be in it. You know, I, I think golf's a fun side gig. I think the main gig is is for me is making a contribution and and how do I do that? And I can again use my voice because we're talking to twenty five million people every weekend. And on I saw the ratings for this last weekend games almost fifty million people. And then we got the Super Bowl on Fox next year in New Orleans where I had my first Super Bowl appearance with John Madden as the On the call, it was, you know, it brings back goosebumps for me thinking about that day. So I want to be able to do that. I'm I'm doing that in business. I I merged two of my companies, say, with another great company called Noble out of Boston um, to really amplify the message there. So how do we, you know, when when I feel like I've been blessed with so much and so many people came into my life that's impacted me in a positive way, I want to give back to those people. And I want to try to provide the lessons that I've been able to learn being around some of the greatest people in the world. I've had... I've had dinners with people that, you know, the greatest in their field. So the only thing I can do is spread that message of what it takes for other people to maximize their potential. I can do it in business, but I really want to do that next year on Fox. I'll be able to do that, be partnered right there with you. I don't know if I'll be in that studio at the same time as you, Colin, hopefully one day. But I love being a part of that Fox family. Tom, it's great to have you. Seven-time Super Bowl champ, five-time MVP. Great to have you here. I think you'll love it. I know you will because I have, and it's been the greatest eight-year run of my career. Um, Tommy, it's great seeing you. Thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. Thanks, Colin. Appreciate it. See you soon, pal. You bet. Hi, everybody. It's me, Uncle Colin. Subscribe here to get the latest from the herd, including exclusive behind-the-scenes videos and more, wherever you may be, however you may be watching. Thanks again for making us part of your day.